So I, I've been shooting, climbing full time, sort of professionally for about 18 years now. And I've got quite a large body of work, as you call it, like a collection of images over the years. And it, it's sometimes sort of like quite funny to look back and see some of my earlier work. And I, I guess I'm starting to get a bit older now and I'm, I'm starting to realise that, shit, I'm capturing history here. This, some of this early stuff that I was shooting, that's now becoming history. And it's something in, uh, like it's an era of Australian climbing or world climbing that I've, I've captured and I've been around and documented. Well, uh, some quick tips for climbing photography. I think, I think um, one thing I, I often say with this is you've got to start with your vision or your, a vision for your finished product in mind before you start. Because a lot of photography is just reactive, you know. People see someone climbing and they pick up their camera and snap or they see their mate bowling and they just pick it up and snap. But um, for me, what I've, I've found really lifted my photography to a higher standard was when I started having a real vision for the finished shot and then you can work out the light, the angle and those sort of things to so sort of start to doing, put a bit more effort into it. And the problem is unfortunately once you start putting more effort into it, it starts compromising your climbing time. So I guess the first, the second step, the first one is to get your vision, the second one is put a bit more time and effort into it. And um, uh, yeah, taking it a bit more seriously and being prepared to give up on, on your own personal climbing is, uh, has been necessary for me anyway. So for the last few years I've been experimenting with this photo pole apparatus and, yeah. and this book is the first book that I've done which, where I was using this technique. Yeah. It's basically an eight metre long painter's pole. It's, that's it, a painter's pole, but it's, the trick which took me a bit of figuring out was uh, how to rig it so that it could hang on some guy ropes from above. And then basically the camera hangs off the end of the, the pole on a monopod and some clamps and some slings. And then there's a video feed from the camera down to the end of the pole where I'm holding it against the cliff. And there's a, a little uh, video monitor so I can see the, the composition. And, and then I use a, a remote release to trigger the shutter. And it's really cool because you, you, know, you can change the camera from a vertical to a horizontal framing. It's quite versatile and you can move it around and see your compositions. And it's pretty quick to set up, like only an hour or so to set it up and yeah, quite versatile. And when I went overseas, I, um, I left the painter's pole behind and just bought one for 50 bucks at a uh, hardware shop and headed up to Devil's Tower and got some amazing shots with it. Well, I'm not, I'm not really sure what the audiences get out of climbing photography. I mean, that's, that's up to the viewer, not for me to, to tell them what they get out. I mean, I, I would hope, I guess, that um, people get a bit of enjoyment. They can see something in it that they relate to, which sort of um, speaks to them. Like, like, this is my sport. This is what I love. These are the places I love going to. And when they can see that in an image, I hope, I hope it's something they can relate to. And I hate to, word, to use the word inspire, because I, I don't think I can say it's a goal of mine to inspire people, but it's always nice if people are inspired, if they uh, see a place or something and get out there and do it, um, then that's fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm not saying it's not a goal of mine, but it's just, it's just it's up to the individual to take that from it if they do. And if they do, that's awesome.